Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Devil's Fork. Today we're going to make an Asian inspired shepherd's pie. What you're going to be needing for this dish is potatoes, white pepper, uh, onion powder, garlic powder, some salt, some sugar, some tomatoes, two eggs, some corn, butter, garlic, onion, some Szechuan chili bean paste. You guys can find this in any Asian market. Some dark soya sauce, a pound of uh, minced veal, and some olive oil, as well as some ginger and some spring onion. Let's get cracking! Alright guys, so here we are today, I'm going to show you guys how to make an inspired, Asian inspired shepherd's pie with a bit of a kick to it, but there's a little twist to the story today. I invited one of my top fans, 13 years old, Alessio Bruno, he's going to help us how and show us how exactly, uh, if, if I even know how to cook. Uh, so he's, he's going to, he's going to, yes. So let me introduce Alessio Bruno, come in, let's get cracking! Oh yeah, baby! All right, guys, so first things first, what we gotta do for this dish is we gotta prepare our vegetables. Logically, you clean them first. Don't take them out of the garden or go get them that everybody touch with the COVID, that could say blah, 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 and then you eat them. All right, <laughs> so you're gonna go grab your tomatoes. And Alessio, you're gonna help me chop these tomatoes, right? So I clean them, I take them off the vine. Well, I'm gonna give you half. These are very simple to cut, nothing complicated. We're gonna take them off the vine. And we're gonna slice them right down the middle, okay? So you're gonna go ahead, grab your knife, and just grab your tomato, and just slice it carefully, your fingers, right down the middle like that. I'm using about 12 cherry tomatoes. Why do I use cherry tomatoes on the vine? Because it's much more savory, and you need savory stuff in a dish. You're not gonna put agadrama, all right? So you keep slicing those tomatoes down, Okay, so we finished chopping our tomatoes. Thank you, Alessio, you did a good job, by the way. You're welcome. Nice guy, this guy. All right, so we're gonna take our tomatoes and scaff them on a plate because it's the devil's fork. We scaff things on a plate! All right, now we're gonna grab our onion. Clean me the onion, Alessio, show these people how do we clean an onion. We're gonna cut straight the butt now. Then the other side. And then a little groove on the side. We're gonna slice right down the middle, and we're gonna grab just little strands like that, okay? So little strands, and then we're gonna go ahead and just rock a knife right through it. The rest, the butt, is just gonna, and that's it, it's done, okay? So you're gonna go do our second one if you can, Alessio, just to show people. Okay, so we chopped and minced our garlic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our garlic. Uh, sorry, we chopped and minced our onion. Sorry, guys, I had a few whiskeys yesterday. All right, smash that garlic down and just take that skin and it should come off very easily. And then you go like this. Oh, that's it. It's done. Okay, so next one, you're gonna go like this. 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 You're gonna go like that. Okay, it's done. <laughs> then you're gonna chop the butt. Take the butt off. Huh? You take the butt off. Come, come closer. Don't worry, I didn't fart. Come closer. So we're gonna take that, and then we're gonna roughly sharp that garlic, okay, because we need a bit of flavor. So we roughly sharp it one way, and roughly chop it another way, and that garlic is perfect to go into our dish, okay? With that said, we're gonna need some spring onion. Guys, spring onion, um, we're gonna use two in our dish, and we're gonna use one for topping, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean our spring onion. So we're gonna grab these two here, and you see the skin that's here? Mm -hmm. You're gonna just take this and you should be able to pull it off completely. And that's, that's we don't want our first skin because that first skin is bitter, so we don't put that in our dish, okay? Same thing with this, you know, just pull it down and then it should come off nice and clean. See, when you chop these, you gotta go at a 45, okay? Rock your knife. Keep the tip 
down and your bottom leg goes up and down. So we're gonna, so we chopped our, our, uh, our onions. Come closer, we'll come closer, don't worry about it. I didn't, like I said, I got no more gases. <laughs> yeah, funny, okay. so, <laughs> so we chopped our onions and our garlic. Now we're gonna take our egg yolk to make a nice egg wash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack our egg. Our eggs to make our egg wash. We're only using the yellow of the egg. We don't need the white to make the egg wash. The reason why is because we don't want to have scrambled eggs on our potatoes. We just want to gloss it. So we're gonna take the beginner's whip. <laughs> This is for you, I got it, just for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is for uh, midgets, but my midget moved out, so now it's yours. <laughs> you can go ahead, and now you're gonna just stab and beat those, and just leave it as is. So you're just gonna beat them, that they become all unit. So usually you just tilt it like this, it'll be easier for you. Gonna take that egg wash, we'll put it aside, we don't need it right now. We're gonna cut our potatoes. Now, our potatoes, um, guys, what you want to do for the potatoes is you want to use a golden potato. Why? Because they're softer to texture and they have more flavor and less starch. All right, you're gonna go right down the middle, mm -hmm. one chop, and then you're gonna. So you're gonna make them even. Why do we make them even? Uh, so they're gonna cook the same. This kid. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna keep doing that, one, two, okay? You can use the big one for this. I'm gonna take them as you chop them and put them in the pot, okay? okay. So he cut the potatoes, unless you cut the potatoes, and we're putting them in water. We don't need to soak them because we're not making fries or anything. We don't need to take much starch because there's not much starch in the potato. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add salt to this, um, to this, um, potatoes. that's it, the potatoes. Okay, so we're gonna add about a punch of salt. When I mean a punch, I mean that it covers the palm, that it comes flat with your palm, okay? In a U. Throw that in. We're gonna put this on the stove. We're gonna put that at max, okay? We're gonna boil that up. So, now with that done, we're gonna start our Asian meat. Let's go on a stove, baby. All right, so we're at the kitchen top. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook our meat, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our butter, uh, which is here, and we're gonna put it into, the, into that pan. And here I have about a spoon and a half, a uh, tablespoon and a half of butter, okay? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're also gonna add our delicious oil that's given to us from uh, Casa del Aspetta del Molise. Guys, check this out. This oil is fantastic, 100% Italian. So we're gonna grab and put about one tablespoon over the butter. Why do we do this? Because we don't want our butter to burn. Right, Alessio? Right. See what I mean? See, I'm right. If he says I'm right, I'm right! All right, it's perfect. Enough? Yeah, it's perfect, it's perfect. So we're gonna close that up. And now we're gonna wait until our butter uh, melts. So we're gonna just move the pan around like that. Just move it around and make sure that butter is a bit everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that garlic and uh, Onion in. Perfect. So we're throwing in our garlic and uh, you're just gonna give that a twirl. Make sure that they're all coated with the butter and oil, okay? Just roughly just go. Do like the devil would do it. But... So what we're gonna do now at this point is we're gonna grab our chili Szechuan paste. Guys, this you can get at any Asian market. It's fantastic, full of flavors and it gives that kick. Uh, to your meat, okay? So you're gonna grab a spoon. And we're gonna grab a spoon and a half of... <laughs> Thank God. So we're gonna grab a spoon and a half of this. So one and two. So it gives us a nice spicy and it's gonna give us a red color, okay? Perfect. All right, so once that's done, we're gonna throw in our corn. Guys, don't be shy for the corn. We're gonna throw in a whole can of corn, okay? Don't forget. Once the corn is in, we're gonna cook that out for about three minutes. Is this uh, easy for you? How's it going? Really easy. It's, it's pretty much easy, right? So it's nothing complicated. Perfect, perfect. So we're gonna just shake that on. You're gonna grab your pan. And, sorry, don't worry about it. I don't know. <clears throat> okay. Perfect, Alessio. Now you're gonna grab that pound of veal. Guys, we're using veal 
minced veal. Why? Because it's a shepherd's pie. Shepherd equals sheep. Little sheep, veal, salama. Don't put beef in a shepherd's pie. The meal is in, the veal is in, guys. Thank you. And you're gonna break up that veal, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your veal and you're gonna make sure to break it all up into little, little pieces, okay? And as you cook, uh, it breaks up easier, okay? So you're gonna, at first you're gonna see that you're gonna have a hard time, but as it cooks, it slowly breaks up on, breaks up on its own, okay? So we're halfway through done. What we're gonna do is now we're gonna add our dry ingredients. So we're gonna add some salt and just a little bit of salt because we're putting soy sauce to this. So I'd say about a teaspoon of salt, not more than that, all right? Sugar, we're gonna put about a, tape, um, a teaspoon of sugar. We're gonna mix that in. Onion powder, we're gonna put about two teaspoons of onion powder. a teaspoon and a half of garlic powder. And just put a pinch of the white pepper. At this point, we're gonna take our ginger and we're gonna grate that ginger into our dish, okay? So you're just gonna step aside two seconds of time that I just... Okay, we're gonna grab our ginger. And you like ginger, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put quite a bit of ginger. And ginger is very healthy for you. And Alessio loves ginger, so a ginger, you're just gonna go ahead and keep doing this, okay? Don't go too close to the fire because I don't want you to get burned, okay? Go ahead. There you go. Hey, he's a natural, man. I love this kid. Mwah! Oh. We're gonna take half of uh, the English, English one, I guess, of, the, of the spring onion that we cut. Uh, throw that in too. And you're gonna throw in a teaspoon, a tablespoon and a half of soy, okay? And I'm using dark soy today because it has much more rich flavor uh, than regular soy. So that could be a dark, dark soy to give more of that um to your dish, okay? All right, so we're gonna cook this out for about three minutes. After the three minutes is up, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your mashed potato. We should be good to go. See you soon. All right guys, so our potatoes have been cooking, our meat is done. What I want you guys to know is, I had a question that Alessio asked me. Alessio, what did you ask me before? What question did you ask me about the potatoes? Uh, when you cook them, like how do you know if they're, when they get ready? So how do you know when they get ready? See, usually people just stab the potato and they're like, oh, when it goes through and it breaks up, it's ready. No, because uh, some potatoes, you'll, even if they're semi-cooked, they'll split. So what you do is you're gonna grab your fork, grab your potato, push it to the side, and squash that potato to the side. If that potato squashes and it gives you automatically this, that looks like a kind of mashed potato, your potato is done, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. You're gonna grab that sift now. We're gonna strain our potatoes. And now we're gonna put a good amount of butter. Guys, for this dish, we are not putting milk, okay? Uh, why? Because there's two kinds of mashed potato. So there's a fluffy mashed potato and there's the traditional mashed potato that all of you make at home. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a nice fluffy mashed potato, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and open that first drawer and get me, oh, actually, you could just rinse this fork here. We're gonna grab a fork and we're gonna put quite a bit of butter because, oh, you know, butter's so good, ha <laughs> ha. All right. So we're gonna open up that butter and we're gonna grab, I'd say about a good tablespoon and a half of butter, okay? So we're just gonna go grab it, shave that off, throw that in. Now, to this, before we mash it, we're gonna move it around and make sure that that butter glosses those potatoes. Mash that. You want to get the uh, onions? 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we mash everything together and then we throw half of the rest that's left of our onions. We're gonna go ahead and keep mashing those uh, potatoes, okay? Don't be scared, huh? make sure that it's like your ex-girlfriend, like she owes you money. <laughs> <laughs> right. it smells so good. It smells fantastic, doesn't it? You gotta take that texture of potato, and I want you to tell me, what's, does that taste fluffy and delicious? You, you just let me know. Not all. <laughs> you see his eyeballs, they're like, you know, they're like a, what do you call it, a Jim Carrey movie, The Mask. All right, so Instantly it's perfect. It's good? Yeah. All right, perfect. I'm not adding any pepper to this because we have all those flavors under uh, the mash, the, the, um, the uh, shepherd's pie, and, uh, and we don't want to ruin those flavors. So those flavors are going to blend in with the potato, and it's going to be just simply fantastic, all right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our meat, Alessio, and we're going to just fill up our oven-safe... Um, this is, these, these, I mean, you can get them every, anywhere you want, but uh, if you have any oven safe uh, dishes that you can use, uh, I just put it in this, it looks more fancy, but you guys could do a full shepherd's pie, it's not a problem, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill up our dishes. Up. Actually, we didn't fill up. Alessio filled up uh, the beautiful dishes here that we got going. This is our uh, onion soup pots. You guys can get this at Obu or uh, Aries or wherever they sell kitchen stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our uh, pastry bag. And we're gonna take our bag and we're gonna go ahead and wet our spoon. This is a trick so it doesn't stick, okay? You're gonna grab it and put your potatoes in that bag. But, okay, so you're gonna grab that and you're gonna Okay, you just got So you're gonna go ahead and squeeze that through. Go around the edges. This is just for presentation wise. And then you're gonna work yourself in the middle. I'll show you something. Make sure that these edges here, you see the edges that are opened up? Make sure that the potato is covering those edges because we don't want that juice to come out of uh, the dish, okay? So just go like that with your finger and push against the edges. And that should be perfect. And good to close it up. Look at that. Oh, but when you have it, you have it. That's what it is. You understand? Then he's trying to take over the show. That's what it is. Okay, go. Force, 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 force. Don't worry. Don't worry. Push, 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 stop. You see? That's good. Perfect. This is make, don't worry the way it looks. It's going to be beautiful in the end. Okay? So while I'm pasting this, uh, I was going to say Gaetano because we're talking about um, your grandfather Gaetano, right? Yeah. So, uh, Alessio's grandfather Gaetano was in a pasticceraio, right? Yeah. And uh, he was uh, very good in pastries, and he's the one that showed Alessio how to do the bagpiping. So, uh, Alessio, is that how you learned exactly? Yeah, I learned from my nono, Gaetano. Um, I twist the bag, and so it's easier, and it's tired to come out. See? Nonno Gaetano, ma sei un grande sei, grazie. You want to say hi to your nonno, he's watching. I don't know. <laughs> I just so, like, like I said, guys, no matter how you pipe it out, it doesn't matter because in the end, it's all gonna look fantastic and crunchy and it's gonna come out beautiful. All right, guys, so we got our dishes done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a baking sheet and just drop those into our baking sheet. Go ahead. That's perfect. That's it. If you want, we can even dress it before. I wouldn't dress uh, the baked potato now because uh, you're gonna burn the top of it. So you wait until it's done and then we'll put something fresh on the top, okay? So we're gonna put this in the oven for about 15 minutes to broil and get a bit of color on them and we'll be right back. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. <laughs> All right, so guys, our uh, um, Asian-inspired shep shepherd's pie. See what I mean? All right, we're gonna grab that, and this is our final result. We're gonna let that sit before we serve, of course, for about three minutes. It should be good. Uh, just remember not to touch those pots because they are extremely hot. And there you go, guys, a delicious Asian-inspired shepherd's pie.
All right, guys, that was an amazing dish, let me tell you. I hope you guys really tried this recipe at home. You will not be disappointed. I just wanted to say thank you a lot, and here's your thing. Here's thank you something. so much, thank you. Thank you, this is a beautiful gift. Thank you so much to all the Bruno family, I really appreciate it. You guys, thanks for watching. And here's another episode of Devil's Fork.